it's akin to having a bond that pays in pounds of copper for 30 years. And we're just delighted to have that the last uh, payment uh, um, that we received on this. So we received quarterly payments was 974,000 US dollars after tax. Joining us for a conversation is David Cole, the CEO of EMX Royalty, the royalty generator. Mr. Cole, welcome to the show. Maurice, always my pleasure to be here. <laughs> Great to have you join us today as EMX Royalty is on the cusp of consummating a number of large transactions that look to both increase near-term cash flow and expand the company's royalty portfolio. Before we begin, Mr. Cole, please introduce us to EMX Royalty and the opportunity the company presents to shareholders. Royalties are phenomenal financial instruments with huge embedded optionality, discovery optionality, commodity price optionality. We believe you cannot own enough mineral rights and royalties are the best way to be exposed to mineral rights. We accumulate royalties around the world, Maurice. Now to truly appreciate the value proposition of EMX Royalty, Mr. Cole, would you mind walking us through the company's unique business model? Yeah, and as you know, I'm passionate about that. You've heard me talk about it many times. And our bread and butter, our hedgehog, is royalty generation, which is execution of what we call the prospect generation business model, where we acquire large tracts of prospective mineral rights around the world, add value by building geologic models, sell that on to an industry hungry for discovery opportunity in exchange for cash, shares in public companies, work commitments that go in ground to advance those assets, annual payments and stage gate payments and always a royalty on the back end. We do that in addition to buying royalties. We believe a sweet spot is buying existing royalties in addition to growing them organically through that process. And there's substantial synergy between those two because the team that's out doing that royalty generation work commonly comes across royalties that can be purchased inexpensively to augment the portfolio that we're growing organically. And the third thing that we do is make strategic investments. And that comes from that same astute group of entrepreneurial geologists working around the world where they find an opportunity where we need to own stock in a company that's doing something special. And our track record of making those investments, which we call strategic investments, uh, throughout our history of 18 years has, has been fantastic. So uh, we've, we've been able to augment our treasury with strategic investment gains. We've been able to build this portfolio through royalty generation. Uh, and uh, augment that po portfolio through royalty purchase. And it's taking some of the money that we've harvested from our strategic investing gains and deploying it in royalty acquisition. That's put us in this strong position today where we're substantially increasing our top line revenue. Yeah, the unique business model has rewarded shareholders over the last 18 years as EMX Royalty year after year continues to have a strong treasury, minimal dilution, while growing a massive property bank consisting of over 4 million acres of mineral rights. Let's just let that sink in. <laughs> 4 million acres of mineral rights. And now the company will begin to enjoy its harvest of their geological and commercial successes over the last 18 years as EMX Royalty has a number of catalysts coming to fruition. Mr. Cole, I have a map of your global asset portfolio before us. Beginning with the projects that will generate immediate cash flow, let's go to the Caserones mine in Chile. Mr. Cole, please introduce us to EMX's latest accretive acquisition and the details of the transaction. Well, we're delighted to have this long-lived asset in our coffers and, and in our portfolio. Uh, we paid $34 million for this 0.418% uh, NSR. Uh, that NSR, that royalty, uh, exists on that mine for the life, life of the operation. Uh, we expect this to be very long-lived copper mine. We're very bullish copper long-term. This is what we call a copper porphyry deposit. These are big deposits that produce copper for very long periods of time. The official mine life is about 17 years, but we think with additional exploration work, this mine life will be 20, if not 30 years into the future. It's akin to having a bond that pays in pounds of copper for 30 years. And we're just delighted to have that The last uh, payment uh, um, that we received on this, so we received quarterly payments, was 900 and 74,000 US dollars after tax. And so we're delighted to have that exposure, have that co copper price optionality, but also the discovery optionality of them continuing to find more copper mineralization at depth and on the peripheries of that system. Uh, 
the production there is uh, uh, ramping up towards nameplate capacity, which is about 25% more than they are currently producing. So they can increase production up 25% without building any additional infrastructure, which is another aspect of built-in optionality to that asset. Um, delighted to have that as part of our portfolio. And speaking of that being part of your portfolio, have you considered changing the name to Cacherones? <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing that from Scott Close of uh, head of investor relations there, yeah. but it, it it speaks volumes of yeah. just this one transaction alone. We haven't even covered the other ones yet, but uh, in, in sticking with the media cash flow, let's visit Turkey and highlight the recent royalty acquisition there with SSR Mining on the Getatepe Mine. Sir, what can you share with us? Well, we're buying a whole portfolio of royalties from SSR. We expect that transaction to consummate in the first week of October. It's 18 total royalties centered around Turkey and South America. Dominantly, uh, the top line income coming from that portfolio will be gold in the early years, but ultimately it is exposed to a broad, uh, a, a broad group of metals, including copper and lead, zinc, silver, and precious metals. The, uh, but the, the upfront cash flow, that we see from this front-weighted port, uh, portfolio of cash flowing assets is from the Getatepe Oxide Zone, the mine that's going into production. We, that mine will be commissioned on the 26th of October, so next month, and we have a 10% uh, NSR on the <laughs> Oxide Zone. Um, we expect the Oxide Zone there to have about a five-year mine life. When they get into the Sulfide Zone, which is at depth beneath the Oxide, it goes to a 2% NSR and lasts for the entire mine life. And so we expect that front weighted cash flow for the first five years coming from that oxide zone to pay for, if not more, the entire acquisition of the 18 uh, royalties uh, from, from SSR. And the commercial terms of that transaction is we are paying SSR 33 million US dollars in cash and we're paying them 33 million dollars worth of EMX royalty stock and they're delighted to become an EMX shareholder and we're delighted to have them as an EMX shareholder. There's some specific synergies that they see as, as that uh, SSR is uh, uh, looking over our portfolio. They like to have a view to our generative side of our business. That's a specific synergy. And I believe that um, they believe that EMX is a likely re-rate candidate as we continue to augment our cash flow, particularly from Getatepe that our stock will continue to get re-rated in the marketplace as has occurred over the last six years. And they want to be a participant in that. Yeah, 10% NSR, that's practically unheard of. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Well, Thank and, e you, and, and equally exciting, not not quite as exciting, but to me, still equally exciting in some regards. You have another project in Turkey that has a 4% NSR, and that's the Bali, a polymetallic project. What are the latest developments there? Well, it's going into full-scale commercial production. They are putting in a ventilation shaft. They're advancing spiral decline. Uh, so when, when complete, there'll be a one spiral decline that's working with rubber tired vehicles, uh, with LHD, what we call load haul dump modern mining machinery to mine out the ore zones. They're just getting into the upper ore zones now. 5,000 ton per day mill already constructed, tails pond already constructed. We expect to see commercial payments on this production at, at the last quarter of this year and going into the first quarter of, of 22. This is going to become a multi-million dollar per annum cash line royalty for EMX. Let's go to Serbia and visit the heavyweight in the portfolio of the Timuk. When will EMX begin to receive its first cash flow payment, sir? That should be uh, within a quarter or two. Uh, they're commissioning the mine now. They're mining the upper high grade zone. And uh, that is a prelude to development of the lower big porphyry system there when the royalty becomes immensely valuable when they do start mining that lower zone. We do expect them to mine the upper zone for the first decade. And uh, there'll be a nice cash flow for us. Uh, and um, uh, it's one of the world's largest ongoing copper gold development stories. We're absolutely delighted to be exposed to this huge asset. It would be Europe's largest ongoing copper and gold mine. And uh, we have a one half of 1% royalty over that. It speaks volumes to the concept of, of, of optionality within the portfolio to have the opportunity to be exposed to such a huge discovery. Finally, let's visit the U.S. and go to the Leoville mine, where cash flow mm -hmm. looks to be increasing. Yeah, 
Cash flow has been increasing from Leeville. Last month was two hundred eighty-six thousand dollars USD. Uh, the uh, we've seen Newmont Mining Corporation and now Barrick, who's the operator of the joint venture with Newmont, covering the Leeville operation, announce for years now significant exploration results and discovery of new gold zones within the footprint of our royalty and the immediately adjacent uh, uh, real estate. Um, so we, we knew that there was a point in time when this royalty would start to increase in its payment. And we're delighted to see that over the course of the last few months, it's been increasing substantially. Leaving the property portfolio, let's talk about diversification. EMX Royalties Property Bank consists of a diversified metal exposure. Mr. Cole, please acquaint us with the metal exposure that shareholders have in EMX Royalty. Well, we have exposure across precious metals, base metals, and battery metals. We think those are great places to be. It plays to our geological expertise and our business acumen within those sectors. And... Uh, uh, you know, there, there, there's a, a, a number of metals across the periodic table that we're bullish on. We're particularly bullish on sulfide, nickel, copper, and everybody always loves gold and silver, of course. So, uh, you know, it, it, we think that's the right way to approach this business, and it plays to our strengths geologically. Speaking to the metals exposure, inflation is a growing concern for investors and speculators alike. Is EMX royalty a good way to hedge against inflation? I think that it's built in to royalties in general uh, being phenomenal financial instruments in that they're exposed to commodity price optionality or commodity price movements up and down. So you're exposed to it on the downside. You're also exposed to it on the upside. Over the long haul, as fiat currencies have devalued commodity prices, including gold, but also copper, have moved up. And to the benefit of the royalty holder who are exposed to that because they're they're you know they're being paid in metal, um, and so uh, you know over the long haul that's been a, a very positive aspect for folks that own royalties, and we believe that w will likely be the case going forward as well. Leaving the property bank, Mr. Cole, please provide the capital structure for EMX Royalty. Well, post transaction pro forma after we've closed the deal with SSR, we will have substantial new income coming from these assets. And so we're going to move from a, country, a, a company that had a very strong treasury and no debt with um, um, uh, not quite positive cash flow, transforming the company into one that has very strong cash flow and about 44 million US dollars in debt on the books. Uh, and our, our capital structure with respect to our share structure will change and we're bringing in a 12% new shareholder in SSR. Mining Corporation. Now I realize you get this inquiry often, but uh, and, but I have to ask: <laughs> Will EMX offer a dividend? Yeah. So our plan is, once we've achieved this distinctly positive cash flow from recurring royalty payments, which is inevitable at this point in time, we will institute a quarterly dividend. I expect that to have a small payout ratio. We're not here to dividend the bulk of our profits to shareholders. We're here to reinvest it astutely into our portfolio and grow it. Uh, we believe we can quite astutely allocate capital into the growth of our portfolio, and that's the best thing for us to do long term. But we will institute a small quarterly dividend with a viewpoint to increase that quarterly dividend annually thereafter. And just for the record, I plan to match my bullion purchases with shares in EMX Royalty. As I've said this a number of times, I believe that EMX Royalty shares has the potential to melt up. And that's not just my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. Offline, I speak with the most respected names in the space, and we're all in agreement about EMX Royalty. And also, for the record, I get this asked all the time. Maurice, what, which company do you have your largest position in? It's right here, ladies and gentlemen, EMX Royalty. In closing, sir, what would you like to say to shareholders? Well, Maurice, we appreciate your support, and we do believe that we have a business model here that's accretive over the long haul, and uh, it's, a, it's a buy and hold model. In my view, if you look at the track record of some of the big successful names in the royalty space, uh, it would have been smart to have bought those stocks on dips along the way, Franco Nevada being a great example, Royal Gold being another great example. We look to those big successful companies as uh, uh, as mentoring events and mentoring stories and we're here to emulate that and allocate capital astutely and, and build this company for our shoulders we've been doing it for 18 years so we want to do it for another 18.
<laughs> Sounds good. I'll be along for the ride, sir. Mr. Cole, for someone listening that wants to get more information about EMX Royalty, please share the website address. EMX, which is our ticker symbol, royalty.com. Mr. Cole, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Wishing you and EMX Royalty the absolute best, sir. Thank you, Maurice. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.